Hormones are our soundtrack. If you've ever watched a movie without music, it doesn't make sense. OK, it, it tells you when to laugh. Ha ha ha. Oh, I need to be sad now. Oh, I need to be scared. Now here comes the music. Hormones are how your brain talks to the rest of your body. OK, guys, we need to be sad now. We need to be happy now. We need to be we need to be scared now. But because we live in a culture of such overstimulation and under presence, we have no idea what we're supposed to feel. And we're feeling bipolar half the time, right? We can have five minutes of being confident. The next five minutes, all of a sudden insecurity. All of a sudden we're, we're, we're calm and now raging anxiety. We are so miss emotional now because we have lost the connection to really be creators here. And we have let everything around us determine what we feel and who we are. Even though we're trying to meditate, we're exercising, we're eating well, right? Those are big three, three very tiny things that you're trying to improve in your horror movie. So it's like, okay, if, I li if I'm living in a horror movie, but you come to my horror movie, but I've got an elliptical machine and I've got a salad, would you want to be here? No, it's a horror movie. This is not going to work for very long, is it? It's like my salad and treadmill is not going to change this horror movie. It's going to maybe make it a little bit, I'll, I'll be stronger to run away. I might, you know, have a, a better digestive system for my salad, but my story is not going to change. And this is why every time I would get on a diet, right, and I would start my workout programs, it was always hard in the beginning, but it, I liked being able to control myself like, nope, I'm not going to eat that because it gave me something to do that I could control that I could look forward to. So it was a futuristic addiction. You realize this futuristic, like when I get that first 10 pounds, I'm going to feel better now. Give yourself 10 pounds. OK, or if you're not, you know, waiting, give yourself a little bit of what you were asking for. And all of a sudden you become an addict, don't you? It's like as soon as you get that little tiny result, you get that 10 pounds or you get that, you know, two dollar raise like you hate your job. You get two dollar raise. Now you're like employee of the month. You lose 10 pounds. Now you're like you're a fitness instructor. Right. You go from like, I, I just need a little proof here. I need a little proof. Now you become an addict. How many of you guys have been an addict with something that you were either waiting on or waiting with, whether you lost the weight and you became obsessed with it or you got something that you wanted and became obsessed with it? Like you finally manifest a partner. Now you're obsessed with them. Like I can't live without them. Right. Or you finally lose the 10 pounds and you're like, I need more. It's like it's like we get this tiny bit and we become crack addicts about anything that we were waiting to get. And then we're we're able to do that just because basically that's a false connection. Addiction is what we call false connection. That person feeds you, that weight loss feeds you, that attention feeds you, right? And that keeps you in control of yourself for a while. Now, you get used to the person, you get used to the crappy job again, you get used to the, the, the 10 pounds, and then all of a sudden someone's like offering you birthday cake and you're like, I don't want to be rude. And then you're at home eating an entire cheesecake. And then all of a sudden the weight comes back on. Right. Or you realize you didn't like the crappy job, even with two dollars extra or you don't even like the guy. You just liked what that felt like in the beginning. But notice how we stick it out because we used to like it. This is something you're going to learn in part two is you're staying in places you used to like. You're on diets that used to work. You're trying things that used to work once, but really didn't last for very long. And the reason why none of this works, that person, that diet, that exercise program, is because you are out of balance and you're using your addiction to have a false sense of balance. That person, good. Okay, I know who he is at night. That This diet, great. I know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. It gives you a sense of safety. Realize your addiction is your safety elements. That relationship, right? I used to ask my mom, like, why are you staying with this guy? He's beating the crap out of you. Why? And like, well, I can't be by myself, right? 
And who else is going to want me? Right. I mean, this is what women and men have gone through with each other. Right. Now, let's look at that relationship that you're having with yourself. How many times have you beat the crap out of yourself? Right. It's like you've abused yourself. You've neglected yourself. You've punished yourself. You've starved yourself. You've criticized yourself. And you, we ask, why do you do this to yourself? Well, I, it's helping me be a better person. It's helping me do what I need to do. It's helping me control myself. If I starve myself, then I won't be overweight. Do you realize how abusive this is? Well, this was my entire story that I'm sharing, like the body addictions, the abusive relationship with myself, that if, uh, I was up to 215 pounds at one point. You guys, I'm barely five feet. You can imagine what that looked like. Thank goodness this was before like major social media because, you know, those memories that pop up that are like, thanks a lot, Facebook. You know, those memories on Facebook that pop up from too long ago that I don't have any of those pictures, but like every time something would change in my reality that I couldn't control, the weight would come back. All right. Or every time, here's another one. Every time life would start to go well. Have you noticed that sometimes you get out of control when your life's going well? Because you think you can let go, don't you? You're like, I'm finally happy. He loves me for me. This job respects me. So you let go, don't you, of your obsessive control of your own behavior, right? And when you let go, everything that you were like hiding or running from comes right back into your reality, whether it's the weight, the rejection, the abandonment. So when we're holding everything together, it appears good. 